Okay, so moving away from functionalism now. Okay, we've had Durkheim and Parsons, and now it's moving on to a more negative, uh, I should say, critical uh, perspective in Marxism. Um, one of my favorite uh, theorists, actually, or set of theorists, because they are actually very easily easily explained. So do try and uh, not be too confused by this. It's actually fairly straightforward. Um, Worth noting, again, 1976, so there's potential to call it outdated. Um, Marxist perspective, okay, hopefully you're fairly familiar at this point with your theories, so you understand what the Marxists are talking about with the ruling class and the, and the working class, bourgeoisie, proletariat. Um, so hopefully that wider understanding is there. Um, but if it's not, then perhaps uh, leave this video for a second and, and go and try and revise the theory before you, uh, you sort of take on the case studies, okay? Because there's no use learning these case studies unless you understand the perspective that they're coming from, okay? So Bowles and Gintis, or Bowles and Gintis, however you want to say it, um, they basically talk about how uh, what what the school's for, okay, the function of education, and they basically talk about the fact that what all they're really doing schools this is all they're really doing is providing uh, the bourgeoisie or capitalist society with new sets of workers year by year. It's like a a factory uh, production line, okay. That's that's basically what they're talking about, and the way that they sort of they clarify this through the examples that they give. Um, make reference to this idea of the correspondence principle. Okay, so that's that's a word you really should know, um, the correspondence principle. And what it's referring to, um, as I've said here, um, it describes the way that the education basically mirrors the workplace. Okay, so if you think about it, um, you, you have bells to dis dismiss you from classes or breaks, I should say. Obviously, in Tring School, we do it slightly differently. But um, that's very similar to the way that it operates on a factory uh, factory production line. Okay, You have bells and whistles and whatnot to tell you where you need to be and when. Um, so remember, talking from a, sort of a, a time gone past where factory work was still quite sort of um, prevalent, um, this really did mirror the workplace. Equally, things like uniform, so becoming, uh, so t turning up to school really smart and and whatnot, that is breeding a an ideal worker. Okay, someone who's very hardworking, someone who is presentable, who is obedient, and highly motivated. Okay, all of those things were really, really important to to to, uh, to bosses, the bourgeoisie, according to Marxists, and the education system made it very, very easy. Uh, for for these for these new workers to go straight in and uh, and begin working, so they also reject the view that societies capitalist societies are meritocratic. So remember what meritocratic means the uh, the whole idea of work hard, gain rewards. Okay, they reject that view and believe that caste background is the most important factor in uh, influencing levels of attainment. Okay, so basically, it's not about how hard you work, it's about what social class you belong to. That is what basically is going gonna, is gonna to give you those qualifications that you need. Okay, so it's all about social class, not about individual merit. Um, so remember, all that the bourgeoisie wanted were mindless, um, sort of obedient workers, okay, because often the work that they would be wanting them to do was manual work, okay, so there's no real sort of skill involved, all they wanted were people who were docile and sort of not really with it enough to question what they were doing, um, and that's what school was creating, according to Bors and Gintis, those mindless people. Um, so a few examples, you've got timetabling, okay, so much like factory rotors, Bells, as I've already talked about, so uniform, smart appearance when at work. Um, most importantly, things like detentions and sanctions for poor, poor behavior. So if I, any of you have ever done anything wrong, gotten a detention. That, according to Bowles and Gintis, is basically um, sort of preparing you for the world of work, where if you turn up late, if you do anything that you shouldn't do in work, you're going to get punished, okay? And that's a very simple way of looking at it. Um, and as always, and you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, I'm coming up to my limit, so I will uh, evaluate this theory in a part two video.